Cyprian, have you ever watched um, Soft White Underbelly? Yes. Uh, did you... I have talked about it as well. Did you ever watch the one with Gumbo or whatever? He was that hacker. He It, it, it made me oh, think. I, I think saw I saw that, I but I didn't watch that it. No. Yeah, it's really good. It, okay, I like. I know that. nothing about any of that stuff, so I think you'll get a lot more out of it than I did. But I remember watching it and being like, this is like a really good story. Like, he's like... I'll check it out. He knows what he's talking about. He suffered consequences. Like That you know, channel has broken my heart a few times, man. It's too much sometimes, without a it doubt. It has like, absolutely broken my heart on some of those stories. I'm just like, oh, I, I... You know, and I don't know what the Orthodox perspective on, on this is, but it's a common part of social work. What the Orthodox perspective is on, like... um anger is a secondary emotion mm -hmm. like anger is usually used to cover up something else like mm -hmm. so a lot of times i've been finding that like with those stories and with like people who come in to like the center i work at or something like that i just end up getting kind of mad at them because mm -hmm. i'm just like it's like it's maybe it's a little bit easier than for me to like start to like you know like actually like start to hurt with them and i do that too i try to do that as much as i can but if there's any kind of nuance that there's like a little bit of like crack in their story or if there's like they're kind of not being honest or they're not willing to go to any lengths, then I'm just like, all right, I'm done with you. Be gone. Hi, and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and tonight I'm going to ask Cyprian and Father Turbo, what is the most embarrassing, like, stage or thing you got into or went through? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, just like, oh, boy, I'm not really proud of that time in my life. <laughs> so, Oh, you mean when I was star of a reality show? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, Cyprian wins. Yeah. Cyprian wins. <laughs> oh, that's all. When I, when I showed my naked behind on TV for six seasons. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, <laughs> Why, who are you yeah. asking this question to? Because it was, yeah, 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 yeah. I was hoping a little bit more like, oh, I wore glasses without lenses for a little while oh, or something man. like that. Ooh, buddy. What about you, Father? Oh, man. Do you got it right away, Father? Do you need I do. I don't know if I want to talk about it. because I still have to respect you after this, Father. Remember that. So it can't be too bad. Well, that's pretty bad, actually. Uh, I mean, I went through a, I went through a stage where, uh, gosh, I hate, I'm so, God forgive me, God forgive me. I, I went through a stage where uh, I was flirting pretty hard with like gang banging and stuff. Oh no! Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's just, oh, it's cringy. But yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a quick stage, but it, yeah. Anyways, well, as I get older, as I get older, the older I get, the more I see the absurdity of the gang banging thing. Yeah, I think when I was young, when I was in my twenties, I couldn't really see the absurdity. When I was in my thirties, I thought, well, this is just a bad decision. Yeah, as I for, in my forties, I'm like, that is absurd. Yeah, I mean, I have to like. When I say gang bang, I'm being like, particular, right? Because I was in gangs. Mm -hmm. I was in punk gangs and skinhead mm -hmm. gangs. Like, yeah, sure. I don't have a problem with the gang thing, but like gang banging, as in like, mm -hmm. you know, I was slightly affiliated with one of the one of the colored groups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew, I knew it was that way, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it it that was just like a weird, funky time. Thank God it it. Thank God he pulled. <laughs> pretty quick man that's bad cringy it's bad yeah yeah um well i have a couple 
Uh, there was the I went got and I've answered this before. And what is my most embarrassing music? I got pretty hard into dubstep for a while. That was pretty. That was pretty <laughs> cringy. Right, that's cringy for about six months to a You're year. You're like a Skrillex guy, huh? No, it was before Skrillex. Like that dude is from a band called from first to last he was in a band called from first to last which were like the prize emo band that the hardcore kids Uh, that i hung out with would always make fun of be like oh i bet you like from first to last you know whatever like you know um and so i feel like him and whatever that guy's name is i can't remember what his name is he was the singer for it what was he Um, in the band was he a drummer no he was the singer from from first to last oh he was the singer skrillex was the singer I think oh, really double check me on this. I have no idea. I um, okay. but I cannot remember his name. Sonny Moore. I think wow. That's like the librarian in my head was like Pulled blowing like out. dust off tomes and like looking through <laughs> ancient mean, like I wonder uh, if you shaved your beard. Do I would I look like him? <laughs> I mean I no, just, no. Hold no. on. Don't say nah, nah. Don't say that to me because did Skr- is, has Skrillex ever grown a beard? Because that would really oh, tell God. us. Oh uh, yeah, I can see that. I can see it a little bit. His his features are a little bit more severe than mine. Like he's a little bit more look, sharp. Look I, looky, looky, I found a hooky. Look. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> you got Skrillex with the beard? No, no beard. He just well, look, I mean... bothers saying if I shave my beard, I might look like him. You see that? Can you see that? I just let me see. I'm gonna let me see. That's everybody watching is like, this is not cool, guys, because you're not. Oh, oh, go go Google. Yeah, why don't you pull that up? Why don't you go ahead and post that? I'll just nobody can see that. that. Yeah, there. That could be like a high school Uh, photo. Yeah, that could be a high school photo, man. Yeah, young. Yeah, a little younger. Okay, I see it. Like they're a little bit more. It's a little bit more severe. Severe. Yeah, yeah, definitely different. But the overall aura i do have a doppelganger <laughs> like without a doubt there's a dude that looks exactly like me and he was arrested in somewhere for like chopping somebody's <laughs> head off like no joke like i forget how i found this dude but he looks exactly like me wow um so there's dubstep phase yes. and then um i got really into fight club for a while like the book and well, the what movie. does that mean what's that what does that mean? You were just telling everybody like you were just talking about no, Fight Club nonstop. What were you there, doing? The, no, I was like into it. I was like trying to start a Fight Club. Oh no! I was like buying into the philosophy, the quote unquote philosophy of Fight Club. Oh no! Um, I was like, I read it so many that copy so many. Times. That, that, I mean, I could totally see you getting the Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> it's like, I mean, why does he have a vest? Why is he wearing a cut? And why is he riding around on a on a motor on a motorized bicycle? A motorized bicycle. A motorized a, bicycle. Not a motorcycle. No, no, no. Not a Harley. Nothing like Chucky. Like I'm I'm literally probably oh like an God. electronic scooter I put together myself. <laughs> why is he trying to be sons of energy? And then um I had one more, but I can't really remember what it is off the top of my head. I got to wait. Gotta... What did you do to try to? How do you try to start a Fight Club? How to t- talk talk? I walk me through that process. Trying to... I was blind, blind, mainly blind sober because I was young enough where I hadn't really started my drinking career yet. Okay. I would just try and to fight. I would just try and fight my friends a lot. Like I would try and get. <laughs> and then like the first time either like not usually me, but I landed a good one on them. They would be like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to do this. And I remember like specifically trying in high school to try and get like, um, like a group of guys to like, yeah, no, let's do this. Like every day at four after school, like we go fight, you know, in some, the West parking lot or something like that. And they were like, I don't want to do that. I, I like want to go home and watch Dragon Ball Z. Or do you whatever. think that was the beginning of the modern manosphere? Do you think that was the proto, like that launched it? That you know, Tyler Father Durden character. Father actually shared um like an Orthodox meme squad or whatever the other day mm. where Tyler Durden gives like that speech where he's like, uh, we're the great middle sons of history. Mm-hmm. We have no great war. We have no great famine. Like ours is a spiritual war. Mm-hmm. And then that cuts to, you know, uh, Orthodox like liturgy services. Oh, and that's stuff awesome. like that. Yeah, it, it is. And without a doubt, like there's some seeds that were definitely planted in my brain that came to fruition mm-hmm. later on in my life that I was like, Oh wait, yeah. Like I'm not really supposed to be going and shopping at like IKEA, 
you know, to like, that's not like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with going and shopping at Ikea, but at the same time, that's like not my purpose. Like if I need to go help my wife pick out whatever, sure. I'll go whatever, but it like, and then um, a couple of things have stuck with me. And the other one was like this, there's like this montage in the movie of him looking around his apartment and he sees like, the price oh, attached. the price of the ikea prices yeah or exactly yeah. like the little yeah. and then the little description or whatever mm -hmm. and he's like tyler's talking to him about that later he's like if you just buy this i can't remember it's like an armoire or something then that mm -hmm. problem is solved it's taken care of mm -hmm. you know like i don't have to worry about the armoire situation anymore like that part of my life is taken care of and like i can definitely relate to like that being a temptation of like trying to like feel in control or like trying to like find meaning or purpose through like like material finding and taking and you know giving to myself and establishing my corner even though like it's like you know most dudes are renting so it's not even like my corner of the world anymore mm -hmm. it's just it's kind of like a whole thing and so but it was terribly embarrassing at the time and I look back now being oh man what was I doing but like... there's but the, but the orientation you know because it's all about asceticism like and it's fundamentally a monastery that they've established right like they've got a, a rule a monastic rule yeah in fight club yeah that's true yeah but no i mean i think there's a fine line between like terrorist cult and monastic well, well look well, well I'm, I'm not saying that like what they're doing i'm saying your orientation toward seeing in sure. that yeah something that was like so because it's asceticism right so but yeah but at the time you don't know what proper asceticism is and you just kind of see this thing and you're like oh i'm kind of drawn in that direction as that's a good like a something good, about this is speaking something to about me. this is speaking yeah yeah, exactly. yeah which i find with like a lot of subculture kids at least the one that i was hanging out with the ones that i were who at least like had a, a micro like of believing in the message and not just like wearing the fashion, but like mm -hmm. organically finding the message and believing like, no, it is better when corporate music companies are not involved in the creation of art. And like, mm -hmm. no, I, I do want to just muck up the system, like your pretty little system. I just like if there's like a microbe of you in there, then like orthodoxy, like like all that stuff that you're seeing wrong it's like it is wrong like everything you're seeing mm -hmm. is wrong but the thing is it's like like in the dark knight returns we talked about this a little while ago it's like the proper answer to that is not to become a mutant like you know like join the mutant gang from like the dark knight returns or whatever mm -hmm. which just causes disorder and hurt and violence as a way of like expressing your rage or dissatisfaction with the well, system that, well i mean cuz cuz what's getting highlighted here obviously is like this reality of, I, I think you and I had this conversation, I can't remember, but you know, this, everyone's looking for the good, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean it's good. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right? Everyone's looking for the good. And so kind of like understanding that phenomena and that's where discernment is super important, right? Because you want to achieve something, you have an insight, like, something's wrong with let's say not even like you know what the good is but mm -hmm. you know something's wrong let's say and that's where i mean that's i think the trick where that's the trick with everything you know and that's why discernment is needed with everything because uh all of the various kind of social movements and all the social movements and movements of society if you understand my distinction there you know mm -hmm. all of them have some sort of truth Mm -hmm. right of like they're they're identifying something that at the very least is wrong or at least identifying something that is ideal or good but it, everything else surrounding it is is off you know and so that that's where we get that's where we get hooked in the wrong way you know because it's like yeah i resonate with everything or everything is terrible and mm -hmm. this group has found a way to kind of like thunder nose at it which is great but you know, idolatry, right? It's like that becomes the whole thing, the thumbing of the nose. Without a and doubt. You just kind of... It's the reaction, it. right? Reactionary. Reaction. Yeah. Hey, Father, I have a question. I don't understand the differences between social and societal movements or whatever. 
Yeah, so like um, a social movement would be something um, particular, something that can even be um, constructed. You know, it's like, we're going to do this and you can be very conscious of like a specific group of people recognizing a certain facet of culture, philosophy, you know, kind of morality, whatever it is. And they go about trying to experience or manifest this ideal, right? Okay. Whereas a movement of society is, uh, it's it's the difference between a social movement would be like the surfer going out onto the ocean and choosing to surf versus bodyboard or boogie board or wakeboard. And a movement of society is the ocean moving. <laughs> it's like yeah. a wave, you know what I mean? Uh, do, do you see the distinction there? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. So to put it in Missouri, it's like if you're hunting possum, right? No, I'm just kidding. That's all I got. I just wanted to jab at that. So anyway, that's the important. Okay, so before we get into the topic, Father, I have a question, and I've been meaning to ask this for a long time. Why should a priest be the only person to say that for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, uh, you know, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit at the end of the Our Father? Like when Good a priest, question. what's that? Good question. I oh, yeah. Yeah. So because the exclamations in the liturgical prayer are reserved for the priest and because the priest is on the one hand, on a real kind of like basic level, you could say like officiating, right? But I, I, I don't like that term because it, it, it sounds like you know you're. It sounds like it's some sort of secular kind of like uh, event, you know. Okay. Um, but it's it's the vesting of authority of the priesthood, which is Christ's priesthood. Right. So understanding what a priest is. And so the exclamation is in some regards, you could look at it as like the, the prof, part of the prophetic office of the priesthood. So when we say prophetic, everyone's mind goes like, what? Like, how's that telling the future? It's not prophetic. Prophetic doesn't mean telling the future like a soothsayer, although there are aspects of that. The prophetic office, like the prophets, the prophets were the prophets because they proclaimed the, the will and the kingdom of God. That's why they're prophets. And they may happen to tell a future events. Do you see what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. prophetic in the Christian sense really doesn't have anything to do with telling the future mm -hmm. or, you know, clairvoyance. It has to do with proclaiming the righteousness, the justice, the power, and the glory of God. That's what the prophetic office is. Okay. Okay. Right? Super important because, you know, with the, um, I don't want to say, just, I don't know what the word is right now, how um, prevalent, charismatic, you know, um, experience and tradition, I don't know traditions, but, you know, cults are. <laughs> um and, and people chasing after sensation and signs. It's really important to say this because as Orthodox Christians, what happens is we begin to really lose certain things because we're worried about it being associated with something negative, right? Yes. So yes. like two great examples, not the only ones, but just two great examples are the prophetic and like social justice. Like even saying social justice is like, uh, right? It's just people... Just associate that obviously with leftist, communist, and woke at this point. But the fact of the matter is, is that you know that's a great move that the devil has made to really cut people off from a very you know important aspect of of Christian spirituality, right? Um, and the prophetic is another example of that, where people. They shy away from it because when you start talking about it, they think you're going to start talking about, you know, again, clairvoyance and signs and wonders. But really the, the prophetic on the base level would look like speaking truth to power, 
that's one of the ways the prophetic looks like. Um, and this is very much the Orthodox tradition, St. John Chrysostom, St. Ambrose of Milan, you know, St. Maximus the Confessor, we can go on and on and on and on. Um, and them speaking the, tr the truth of God's righteousness, his mercy, all those things to the powers that be. That's the proper way to understand the prophetic in that sense. But to answer your question, that's kind of one of the aspects of it in the liturgical life. Sure, sure. That's oh, fantastic! Can answer it. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. I um, I, I I always knew it. I figured it was probably like I just didn't have like, as a lay person, just the authority to say that, like to make that proclamation. So, yeah. 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 I mean, well, you know, you're well, you know, I mean, it's etiquette. You know what you're supposed to say, right? It's through the prayers of our holy fathers. Yeah. Um, and then I asked Father the other night, I texted him. Um, because uh I was reading that story of the life of St. John Chrysostom, uh, where St. Paul was behind St. John. Um, there was a guy who kept checking on St. John Chrysostom because uh there was a, something important that St. John needed to do. And every time he would go in there, he saw a man leaning over and whispering into John's ear while he was writing, kind of kept coming back and the dude was there. And eventually uh, St. John missed that appointment that the guy was coming to come tell him about. And St. John came out and was like, why didn't you tell me? He's like, well, you were talking to someone. Someone was talking to you in there. He's like, there was no one there. What did he look like? And they described it and it was St. Paul. And one of the things that they used to describe him was that he was bald i was like so father baldness appears to be permanent <laughs> does this does this have any spiritual ramifications is there something to being oh and that led me to sorry i know this is not this show but where i'm going to talk about it. what's with the two little things on certain saints on their foreheads so the thing is is um when you uh, so the the large cranium yes the seat seat of wisdom it, it's a symbol of wisdom maturity authority you know the vestige of like wisdom that's that's where it comes from you know and then it gets uh stylistically kind of you know exaggerated or whatever but that's that's essentially what it is and that's why for some saints it's not even it, you know it doesn't even become necessarily about the kind of like portraiture right but it's about their transfigured state so in theory in theory you can have an icon of a saint who's given you know kind of like the the seat of wisdom the bald head and they may not have been like actually like bald sure right okay. it's not about like making a portrait it's about their transfigured state so fantastic ah oh, the church is so cool the church is so cool all right so on to the topic and Cyprian, I'm going to let you lead on this because I'm going to be the the wide-eyed yokel that doesn't really understand what's going on here. But take it away. Okay. Okay. So I shared this tweet that came up. People have not really been talking about this. Um, so there's this, this man, guy, whatever you want to call him. His name is George Hotz. For those people who are kind of tech geeks or whatever you may be familiar with this name um in 2007 he was the guy who basically jailbroke the iphone so that people could use it on all the networks instead of at&t he was 17 when he did that he's became very famous for that he's founded some companies since then one of them a very interesting self-driving car company where you could just take normal cars and then you have a, a kind of a um a kit i guess that you put a, there's several different models you have a kit and then you have an app on a phone that uses Google Maps and it turns it into a self-driving car. It's is pretty it, crazy. Is it like effective? Is it like and is oh, yeah. it like legal? Like you can just go yeah. do that and stuff? I don't know about the legal of I mean, I don't know who would stop you, but uh I don't know that it's illegal. Let's put it like that, right? It's not like there's a lot of people out there that that can do it. So his idea here was that you you wouldn't need an entirely new car company like Tesla or whatever, that like somebody could just, it's a mod, right? It's a modification. Okay. So it's like new school hot rodding. But when Elon Musk took over Twitter, George Hotz kind of somehow came into the mix. 
And he was, it was presented as this kind of, I don't know whether tongue in cheek, but he's calling himself an intern at Twitter. And so everybody was like, what is George Hotz doing at Twitter? So obviously he's got like AI, machine learning, so artificial intelligence, machine learning, all kinds of stuff. And I had been, for me, when I saw Elon Musk taking over Twitter, I immediately thought they're going to make basically demons. They're going to make AI demons that are going to run around on social media and influence people. I call them AI influencers. That's what I said. And it seemed a, a little far-fetched or whatever, but this thing came out and it was like more diabolical Amen. than I could have possibly imagined. Amen. In, in like in every way. And it does appear that they're actually building it. And it appears that nobody like nobody's talking about it. Let's just put it like that. And I think that like through a spiritual lens, that's why I wanted to bring it here. We could lay it out. And I thought we could talk about it because it's, it seems highly symbolic. So I'll show you the tweet and post Kanye being banned. Since we had a conversation about Kanye and him being banned and Elon Musk saying that the new thing is they're not, they're going to try to not ban people. They're just going to take away their reach, but this is the addition. So they won't, so you'll be able to say things, but no one will see it, but this is like the next step up. Uh, and it's, uh, it's this. So let me share my, what is going on? Let me share my screen here. Do I not have permission to share my screen? Okay. Here's George Hotz. So he says, can you guys see this? No. No? Here, can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. I want to raise awareness of heaven banning. Heaven banning, similar to shadow banning, is when a user's posts are hidden from all but also we create bots to engage and agree with the banned user. Uh, bots are only visible to them. This practice can reduce toxicity uh, on the internet. Uh, it's not increasing toxicity in my stomach. I can tell you that much. I want to hurl. So the fact, the first thing is the fact that they decided to call this heaven ban. It's important for me. Because this seems like hell to me. This seems yeah. like we're talking about hell. Yeah. That's fine. So I'm looking for something right now. Okay. It, it it seems a little off, but do you guys remember uh in August that first AI tattoo ended up being a sigil? Did you ever see this? Yeah, I yes. remember that. Yeah. yeah. Let me see if I can pull that up. The reason why I'm going there is just because uh not that this particular thing isn't fascinating, because I mean, I just want to throw this out. We, we talked about this is like, to me, this is, it is creating, it is manifesting an aspect of hell, but you have to understand like what hell aspects of hell are. And so, you know, basically throwing people into an even more intentional state of delusion. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Gosh. Like that's. I think that, on the I mean, thread you called it delusion on steroids, which yeah, is delusion on steroids, you know. Yeah. But but to me, the almost kind of more interesting thing about this is just one more kind of step in the development of um, the kind of the technology um, becoming more and more like how I want to say this the right way. It's like, no, we are seeing spiritual realities being revealed behind the, these technological advancements, right? Mm. Um, and this revelation, this revealing, um, okay, like, it's not it's not sophisticated i guess we can try to make it sophisticated and more entertaining for people but it's demons you know so right. so, so like how does it work in the sense that the quote unquote artificial intelligence is interfacing with demonic intelligence how like what is that okay yes let's talk about it like like let's talk about that because you even get to the kind of inverse of the prophetic, which is we had that thread a couple months ago. Remember, we there was the one AI painting. Yes. With, um, 
I think Andrew, you did it where it's like the gay rights thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it was a demon. Yeah. You said draw gay rights. And yeah. it was like the devil. Yeah. Yeah. With a rainbow. That got banned, I think it was. I think that picture got banned because it was obviously like, you know. Provocative. Well, provocative, but also too, you know, the alphabet community was like, yes, would have been offended, like, oh, you're saying we're the devil, but like, I, you know, um, but see, to me, this is this is fascinating and interesting because on our end, like, you know, let's just playing, you know, pun intended, forgive me, just playing devil's advocate. Um, someone could say to us, well, this is all just your own kind of confirmation bias and. Um, these are, um, you know, kind of like pulling from a, a more like Jungian like perspective, like, well, these are just deep, um, deep symbols of the subconscious that are latent, that are easily accessible, you know, blah, blah, blah. And sure, I, I'm not gonna, I'll grant you that, but that doesn't mean it's not the other either. And I think if anything, the the aspect of it being the the kind of pond scum of the subconscious, you know, uh, it almost it almost proves the point because when we start seeing how these movements and technological advancement are bringing us not just simply back to, but I think to a deeper understanding of what the demonic is, right? And I, I think it's I think it's very helpful in many ways because one of the biggest things to get people to get out, to get people to start thinking or get them out of this way of thinking is, you know, this old conversation on this channel, whatever, but um, we have to remember that in our little bubble, our friends and neighbors and aunts and sisters and in-laws, they still think of the devil as like, you know, the, the Pluto cartoons with mm -hmm. the angel and the, and the, you know, pitchforked, sure red suited thing and I, I think the I think the sophistication and to be frank the almost um breadcrumbs or the paper or you know the kind of getting to the point of empirical evidence mm -hmm. I, I think it's really valuable actually for as frightening as it is as frightening as it is it's a lot easier now to start talking about things like principalities and powers and demonic reality in a way that can help people start to say hmm you know because it, it's one thing like you know you got your Naomi Wolf, Naomi Wolves of the world mm -hmm. right who they have been awakened to some degree because of the political absurd the the absurdity of political movements since 2020 if if it, am I make are you guys following me on this yes yeah. yes 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 absolutely yeah. um but that leaves a lot of people still in this place where it's like, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That Man. leaves a lot, that leaves a lot of people in the place still where it's like, well, that's, it's still the bankers or still this or that, you know? And, and at best, maybe they'll say, um, well, it's still like projections of your subconscious. And it's like, okay, um, let's run with that though. And, and let's, let's go even further than, because then when you start getting into like that tattoo, you start getting into this piece of art here, it's like, you know, there comes a point where people, if you're, if they're willing to engage with you to a certain degree in this conversation, the guys are asking themselves like, okay, what are the odds of that? Okay, what are the odds of that? Okay, what are the odds of that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that what will happen is there comes a critical mass, if you will, where mm. people either completely critical mass where people have a window of opportunity where they can be like, I can't deny this. I, I can't deny that there is quote unquote evil in regards of like the demonic, the devil, however you want to put it, this is real, you know? Um, or they just go like, nope. And they shut the door, pull a cipher and go back to sleep and have their, their juicy steak. You know what I mean? Um, but I think this is important to, to look at because on the other side of it, there's still a lot of believers 
that um, they think that they don't they don't need to know about this stuff. And I, I understand mm. that argument. It's kind of like just focus on the light. Don't worry about this and that. But I think we live in a time where I feel much more comfortable to to tell people, yes, focus on the light when you're dealing with your own personal temptations in life. Mm. You know what I mean. But in regards to trying to navigate the world right now, it's much more apropos to quote St. Paul, speaking of St. Paul <laughs> earlier, and that's let us not be ignorant of the wiles of the devil. Sure. I just want to kind of put all this in that category to kind of prime the discussion, because I understand where people go like, man, so much emphasis on the demonic, so, mm. and isn't that sensationalism? And I'm like, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, at least on our side, I would say no. I think I think these are important conversations to have because, um, you know, things like Neuralink coming up, you know, like to sure. me, this is this all connects to like, well, it's the same guy. Yeah. Let's not forget. It's the same. I mean, the same guy who's talking about this heaven banning. It's Elon Musk. Yeah. Right. He's the same guy who wants to cut a hole in your skull and implant in something into your brain. Yeah, yeah. And I people mean, are going to go for it. I mean, it's one of those things where no one, well, I don't say no one. It, it, it seems as if people are not prepared to really think about this, oh. let alone, let alone have the conversation. Oh. You know what I mean? People are not prepared. Father, father, to... father, forgive me. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't even thought about that. Do you think that people look at something like this and just see it as like something inside them says, this is so monstrous? Like the Neuralink. Oh, yeah, we built a robot to cut a hole in your skull and yeah. stick something in where people are like, this is so monstrous. I'm not even going to talk about it. Yeah. So that's not the feedback I've been getting from it. No, no. And I'm I'm talking about a, a couple specific people, but those are the people I talk about that stuff with. They're excited for it. They're like, yeah. Oh, I they mean, want it. I think they want something resembling that. Are they going to go out and do it the the day it opens? No, but they like give it ten to fifteen years, twenty years, a couple hundred people and walk around. I mean, forgive it. me, Andrew, for me interrupting you, but. I'm glad you brought this up because it, it's going to get me to a point that um, I, I personally struggle with, right? Um, and I mean, this is going to be, this is tough to talk about because it, it just cuts to the quick for, for most of us, you know, I mean, just even right now, what we're doing, the very medium of it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, is we're, we, we are without sensationalism, and without being hyperbolic, we are so further along in regards of the cy cybernetic experience than most people, like people don't even understand. You know what sure. I mean? Well, you feel naked if you're without your phone. At yeah. least I do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it's a appendage. Yeah. yeah. At this and, point. and the way that it has, you know, literally, you know, rewired our, 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 mm -hmm. I mean, neurological systems you know what i mean like that's it, it's it's a real thing and i can't help but just feel that um you know this is another reason why the arguments in regards of you know orthodoxy uh and traditional christianity are the is the only way to be saved becomes really important mm -hmm. because when you begin to see how which you know we were talking about this a little bit earlier with Fight Club, like asceticism. You begin to understand mm -hmm. that asceticism is going to be really important for those who are going to to resist. Like if you if you begin to think about how quickly people folded due to the social pressure of what happened during twenty with the virus. Just think about that, right? Well, why were they? Why did they fold so quick? What was the what was the connecting thing? Well, we've, we've talked about this ad nauseum, but really it was people that were really jacked into social media, mm -hmm. like the heavy, heavy, heavy Facebook users, the heavy, heavy people that, you know, and, and that engenders vanity, 
that engenders a type of, you know, man pleasing that engenders just right. I'm just, I'm sorry. It does. Right. And so you don't want to look like the fool, right? Well, mm -hmm. the, the virus is one thing, right? Um, and that's, that's fear of death. That's, and that, that stuff is real, right? Like that's, that's a real play on people's emotions, but let's take it a step further in regards of, and, and this is tough, you know, but let's take it a step further in regards of, you know, what if you really can't buy or sell, mm -hmm. right? I'm not even talking Mark of the Beast, right? Like, let's just, although I am, obviously, but let's mm -hmm. just, for the sake of trying to be, you know, as objective as possible. I mean, like, let's just say that, you know, let's, mm -hmm. let's just say that, you know, they phase out, you know, starting next year into this year, they start really doing a hard push for phasing out like cash. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. these things are not science fiction anymore. Obviously no. they're, they're, they're not even at our doorstep. They're here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I just want to get back to this point because I think this is what, this is what I want to explore a little bit is this idea that people can't even think about this let alone have the conversation. They can't even think about this. And what I mean by that is this. On the one hand, like Supreme was talking about the, you know, the kind of shock and the horror of it. People can't even process that. But I'm also saying beyond that, people don't have the, um, the capacity and the means, you know, to really... Um, gather the needed information it, it, it are we talking about a vocabulary father forgive me a vocabulary a lexicon like what it was yeah I, I mean let me put it this way the image i have is um you know you need a drink of water mm. right imagine you need a drink of water okay mm. i'm so parched if someone comes up and just turns a fire hose on you like an actual fire hose full blast mm. right like civil rights status right mm -hmm. Do you, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That, mm -hmm. That's what I mean by, I mean, the person who needs a drink of water, it's almost like they're worse off now getting hit with that fire hose. Definitely. Right? Because fire yeah. hose, you can take your skin off. Like people don't Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Take your skin off, you know? So the, the glut of information and how that impacts everybody, because, you know, we've talked about this before. Again, people conflate, Orthodox Christians conflate, information with knowledge yeah mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. all the time we're not even gonna i'll tell you this okay for, let me pause and we go down a little rabbit trail and god willing this will make sense if not just pull me out um <laughs> uh i was talking with my 15 year old today we had liturgy this morning and on the on the way to liturgy he was sharing about um uh, another one of his friends from church, his friend, right? So not the friend from church, sure. but the friend from church's friend, like his neighbor, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe he's the kid's 14 or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. but like this kid, you know, broken home. I mean, it's kind of getting back to what we were talking earlier too about like stuff on underbelly, like heartbreaking, broken home and, you know, is basically this kid's life revolves around you know trying to you know have sex with his girlfriend or whatever right and just kind of shocked that you know my son it's like what you know like you don't want to do that it's like no you know in our religion you know we believe you know this to be married all the stuff right the reason why i'm bringing this up is um i said last week about you know i've been out and about and how bad it is i just want to i just want to clarify something for everyone when i said that i didn't mean just like seeing rainbow flags and and like like seeming like every 10th person was transgender or in transition mm -hmm. although that's there that's not exclusively what i was talking about mm -hmm. i i'm i'm also talking about the the decree like the the receding of humanity i see lots of humanoids <laughs> you know what i mean sure. by regards of there, there there's a there's a beast jewel 
There's a lot of taking, not a lot of giving. There's there's a bestial spirit that's rising. Yeah. Right? Where the the foundations of what it means to be human are like it, I mean, gener as generations are increasing, meaning kids are, you know, the generation gaps are getting smaller and smaller. People are coming, coming because, you know, um, the sacred act of procreation is a sport. You know what I mean? And it's a sport to kids who can't even read. Yeah. Let alone articulate themselves. You know what I mean? So they're producing. Are you following me? So what is that being facilitated by? That's what it's being facilitated by. It's being facilitated by this medium. Yeah. Right. And so what we're talking about in regards of the technological advances and how it's, it isn't just kind of, well, you get out into the rain, you're going to get wet. It, it, it's very intentional. And I would just to kind of, everyone's like, what are you talking about? Here's what I'm talking about. This is why I don't know if it was ever important to read it, <laughs> But now, if you've never re read the book of Enoch, now's the time. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Now's, now's the time to read the book of Enoch if you've never read it, because you'll be frightened how much of it will make. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, that's why we're here. Oh, that's, you know what I mean? Sure. Um, because the tattoo, all this stuff is, is what I'm talking about in regards of a knowledge and information being unleashed on us with malevolent intent is what sure. I'm trying to look at. Yeah. And I, I've kind of wondered father a little bit about, uh, first off in our thread a couple of times, like we, um, you would link like a, a Twitter like thread. I don't know if I'm using the correct term analogy, Cyprian, and I would read it and I would be disturbed afterwards. Like mm -hmm. people's responses, like to the point where it's like, I get why this negatively affects people the way that it does. And I know I'm going fairly basic here. Twitter in particular, by the way, Twitter. In I mean, there have been even sociological studies that have been like, if you stay on Twitter, you will be more negative. The longer I, you're on Twitter, the more negative your, your outlook on life. I just remember you linking Kanye saying, get rid of your porn. Yeah. And everyone was like, nope, I'm good. Nope, I'm perfectly healthy. Everything is just fine. Like defending to the death their right to look at porn. Mm -hmm. And I remember like walking away being like disturbed. Like I know when I'm disturbed. Like I know when my soul, something did not sit right with me. And I feel like a little bit like the go for the like peaked out and like looked out and was like, nope, and went right back in. But um, I've wondered a little bit like, what was the spirit behind like the industrial revolution? Because mm. like, if you look at human technological advancement, it's like going, 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 we're going like a steady degree. And then suddenly boom, it just shoots like straight up. I mean, within one century, as opposed to the other centuries, the other, however many centuries we'd lived before that in one century, we went from the first flight to quote unquote, quote unquote going to the moon like if you were to believe mm -hmm. the narrative yep. within yep. 100 years like that all happened i haven't seen like i don't know if we've ever seen like a spike like of technology of like influx of like mechanical understanding like we did at that time and i kind of was just like i've always like kind of pondered about what that what spirit was behind that and like what got unleashed with that and the negative things that's come about because of that, you know, as it's I'm always, de it's always demons though. That's the thing. Like any, you go back to any of these, any of these innovators, any technological innovators, and you talk to, you really get them to when they, they really speak honestly, or you read their biographies or whatever, there's always this weird, like other entities that are speaking to them. Sure. Always. Sure yeah always like I mean, every single time jack parsons right i mean, like, I mean, jack I mean parsons. he he was uh, you know jack parsons was actively trying to bring these things in yeah you know I mean, like he so like he's just, a cut above you know that meme the leonardo dicaprio where he does the he's holding a beer yeah. and he points like the they would ask Street, jack yeah. parsons be like how do you come up with your ideas They're like oh that's easy i do occult magic i summon yeah. a demon the demon tells me what to do and i'm like everyone in the crowd is like oh jack parsons like, yeah, you silly oh, man oh look, look, look what a you. jack the joke but i'm 
the Leo guy. I'm like, no, he's telling you like, and like we think we talked about this before, but like the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez. Yep. Oh yeah. Would, like he would be like, um, well, how did you get away with it? He'd be like, oh, that's easy. Demons helped me. You yeah. know, I prayed and they would help me. I prayed to my to, to, to my dark lord or whatever, mm -hmm. and he helped me. And everyone's like, this whack job. And I'm like the Leo thing. And like that's, we that's all it. did with what's her face that was talking about wanting to date an alien or whatever. Um, oh, um, oh, why am I spacing her name? That's probably probably for the best. Yeah, that's probably for the. But she's saying the sorry. Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, this is what happens when you forget to take your meds, you know. But we're all like the Leo, you know, pointing with. Well, the I think I think there's a lack of. What struck me with the heaven banning thing was i think it, it it displayed something to me it exposed something where and it you know it it actually if i think about it perhaps it's the orthodox phronema because i think before this although it's hard for me to remember exactly how my mind worked before this but like to really put myself there um and to just ignore the orthodoxy i don't think that i would have seen the idea that Although it's very plain when you look at it, it's like, okay, this person is doing something that we have deemed as bad. The things that they're saying we have deemed, mm -hmm. they're so repugnant and reprehensible that no one else should see them. So what we're going to do with this person is we're going to let them say those things and then we're going to introduce these semi-sentient beings these semi-sentient intelligences to basically tell them that what they're doing is correct. And I'm like, what is the difference between that and schizophrenic voices telling somebody to kill? It ain't much. Which are demons, which are yeah. demons, yeah. right? Like what's the difference? Like basically what they're doing is they're going to try to simulate demonic possession. Mm -hmm. Well, And then they're going to call it heaven banning. But is it simulating? And, and that's my point. Like, like, I, that's like, what I'm trying to say. Like, like, I think, like, <laughs> what's the difference? And, what's the difference? Because, because here's the thing. Part part of the problem is, um, I feel like we talk about this too. It's I submit to you, our society is possessed, or or in the throes of possession, or in the throes of diabolic influence, which is moving into possession, right? But sure. I mean. That's just me being kind of like char like charitable, maybe. But the reason why I'm saying this is because if you start thinking about again, this is this is what I'm trying to get across, which I don't know if it's coming through, but um, I people need to the word is maybe it's not sophisticated. People need to wake up to what's happening. You know what I mean? Like it. It, it, it's like people are living in this weird like sci-fi fantasy dichotomy right um here's what i mean by that like okay what's the difference between sci-fi and fantasy one uses lasers one uses swords like someone sure. can see that right and people think okay demonic possession demons that's fantasy right 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 and, they haven't watched event horizon clearly <laughs> yes 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 right that's fantasy we're in sci-fi, man. You know what I mean? And and mm -hmm. I it's 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 a bad kind of weak analogy, but that's what I'm trying to get at. Is because people have this, they look at that as the archaic, which is I think the demons are all about that, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's archaic, that's just you know, um uh medieval mm -hmm. shenanigans, right? We we've advanced, right? Mm -hmm. We we've had these technological advances since the uh industrial age right here we are and so the thought of the thought of these intelligences is is just it's foolishness right and so all the while the very things that would classically be deemed as you know symptoms of possession are kind of ubiquitous in people's mental health now. You know what I mean? Like getting back right. to schizophrenia and stuff like that. Ah, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? So, ah. so there's no way like people, like those who know, like they're not gauging the temperature. And, and this is the real problem. 
the people who should know, Orthodox Christians and, and you know, clergy, you know, they don't know. They don't they don't see it because they just think it's relegated to either like, oh, porn on the internet, it's a moral problem. It's a spiritual problem, quote unquote, in the sense of the interfacing of seeing spirituality as as, as like a moral thing, like you're breaking a bad moral code. But what they don't realize is that that's exactly it. it's still the gates, right? It's it's still the gates. They're still being influenced. And I would even say the digital reality or the digital medium is in, in some regards. I, I feel this is tough because this is this is why this is a tough conversation. God can and does work through it and use it just like God can and does work through, you know, your your mom having cancer. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the digital thing is, uh, it's demonic. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, 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 what it does, what it does is it brings to the forefront all of the various aspects that have always undermined the connection with God, right? Mm -hmm. The Gnostic aspect of it, the disembodiment, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it pulls forward um, the hubris of the intellect. Like it does all of the things mm -hmm. that makes a person susceptible to, at the very least, strong demonic influence, if not possession, right? And then I would say when, you know, the reality that the, let's just say low hanging fruit of the transgender phenomena is mimetic. It's contagious. Yes. Right. That's, that's my kind of like evidence, you know, a through Z, <laughs> you know what I mean? You look mm -hmm. at that you, and how has it been? So what's the medium, what's the means by which it's been contagious? It's, it's through, it's, it's through this. It isn't just the digital aspect of it, but it's the cybernetic uh, interface because it's intimate and it's immediate it's intimate it's immediate which is <laughs> which is the complete opposite of yes. what prayer is yes 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 you know? and, and so, certainly and certainly the complete opposite of liturgy yeah because that's not going to happen in your bedroom no no at, and, at and, two in the morning well no but here's the thing and that's where you see there's a problem because the movement, I know there's some people that give some anecdotal um, experiences, but I think most of us would say nothing good came of people having liturgy on their screens in, in oh. 2020. You know what I mean? And I, I talk with priests, and they, the, the priests I've talked with who've done it, they regret it. They still do mm -hmm. it, unfortunately, some of them, but it's like mm -hmm. they they know that they felt a hit. Like some of those people, they're not coming back. Like they're not, a lot of those people who started watching the liturgy or doing whatever, like until it's safe, whatever, those people aren't coming back. And those were people, Father, forgive me. Those were people who in that case, like for instance, could have gone to that liturgy. Yeah. So well, everyone were people... could have, right? Right, 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 everyone right, right, could right, have. right. Cause right, like, right. if we were just talking about the shut-in, I or someone five thousand miles away, like you know for I mean? instance, I've watched I've watched live yeah. liturgies, but I know I can't yeah. actually go yeah. to that but location because I'm I'm here in the middle of the Pacific. But forgive me, what's the expression? The exception proves the rule. The exception proves the rule, right? That, exactly. That's that's a perfect example for me that how the right. exception proves the rule, right? You know what I mean? Um. So I I think it's important to understand that like getting to the heaven banning thing. Another thing that's real fascinating to me is the way these things are posited as a benefit. And even in the details of like, you know, tell them what they want to hear. Be kind, be sweet, you know? It, it's it's just so- But divine. it's tell them what they want to hear specifically to somebody who's saying something that we've deemed to be morally repugnant. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, does that mean because they because if you just let these things run wild, right? right? If you give this over to AIs, is that gonna mean that the next time that there's a kid who's talking about 
I'm going to go and I'm going to kill this person. I'm going to shoot up this school and I'm going to do blah, 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 that they're going to, that the AI is going to heaven ban him. And then all these bots are going to be like, oh yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Go shoot up a school. I mean, what, I mean, how do you, then who's liable for that? I think the real danger in that would be Cyprian. And I don't know, would be like, if something like that were to happen, it would further encourage the delusion because I think that that would be, might be a bit too overt. I think what would encourage the delusion would be like, okay, this is entirely like a, um, secular mental health problem there there is no like so it would like suggest like we're we're contacting you know the proper like mental health police or something like that to come but, like, I, but I don't think that that's what they're suggesting with this thing that doesn't seem like what the program that they're suggesting maybe is. maybe but i think that the 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 taste i've gotten for like what how this is playing out would be more along the lines of like because again like if they can if they can sell the lesser evil and against the bigger evil they're going to sell the lesser evil so again so like demons don't need you to deny christ they just need to distort them so mm. they don't necessarily need the mass shooters to be um encouraged by this ai or whatever what they would need is to further continue to treat this as a completely secular and physical well, issue well here's the thing mass shooting mass shooters will probably start going on the decline i'm talking about strategy demonic mm. strategy because they they haven't quite yet fulfilled a purpose but you're gonna get to a point where you want things to die down yeah, yeah and and, yeah. and and here here's what i'm here's where i'm going with this you know this is this is another aspect of, of engaging with the demonic that people don't understand is that um the kind of scariness of it like oh this is terrible that's very few people's experience is going to be that. Right. <laughs> like, if you have an experience with a demo with with demonic forces, demonic energy, and it's terrifying, <laughs> that's good. Like, yeah, because you're not going back to you. It. You want it yeah. to be terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, people yeah. don't understand. Yeah. Most people's experience of the demonic is has been pleasurable. That's yeah. the problem. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? 100%. The, the problem is that it, it's been pleasurable, and that's well in the moment. It. It's pleasurable in the moment. Yeah, the hangover, the hangover is the ki is a killer. It's seductive. sometimes literally. Yeah, it's seductive. There it's you go. Seductive. seductive. It's it's seductive, and so mm -hmm. people don't recognize that. And so what happens is they they're in the throes of temptation, and that's that's why they can't get out because the thing that is affirming them, the thing that's you know satiating whatever uncomfortable feelings um that's that's what's being pumped in and and that being that being the case the having banning thing or whatever same thing as censorship the real problem is um it's it's trying to cut out the right kind of conflict because if you start thinking right. if you start thinking about okay well why has the left the movement of the left been so strong well, the movement of the left has been so strong, I think, and in, in, in one aspect of it is that if you start looking at what it's done is everything's like, okay, <laughs> uh, just just think about the kind of ethos of the of leftism currently, right? Leftism and you know, the extreme of leftism, the temptation of the left, wokeism, however you want to put it. What's the ethos? The ethos is be kind. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if it's wrong. Yep. Nothing's wrong. You know, like even when you watch, when you look into like the debate abortion, or the, the abortion debate, right? Mm -hmm. It really boils down to, I don't want my pleasures taken away from me mm -hmm. or you're mean and the way that you're delivering your message. Yep. Yes. Right? Yes. Everything yep. is about or you want to control me. You want to control me, right? You want everything is me. about, you know, the ego, the pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. Um and it's funny cuz Evagoras, Evagoras, he talks about there's the three shock troops of the demons. Mm. Um gluttony, avarice, and uh vainglory mm. it says these these are the shock troops that like make way for all the other passions right sure. and so you know just the abortion for example like it's like the avarice of like i want to live my life i want to live thank you moloch um 
you know, um, I want to have the luxury when I have all those things. Um, you know, don't tell me what I'm doing is wrong because, you know, uh, I wanted, this is a, um, a choice that's all about my empowerment. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, and of course, you know, so I can consume more because God forbid I would have to sacrifice for this child that's going to do nothing. Right. But I can't afford life. it. That's what I it always is. It, I can't, you know I, mean? I can't afford. What if they, what if you can't afford a child? Right. Right. Yeah. So, so I'm just bringing this up because it all centered around those things, but also too, like you're mean, you're mean, you're mean. And this is really important because I think the thing about the heaven banning thing or really it's the next step of censorship, which is really all about, yes, not getting the truth out, not having, um, you know, messages or thoughts that would, you know, challenge the current milieu. But more importantly, it's avoiding, it's avoiding the right kind of conflict, mm -hmm. right? So conflict is good mm. insofar as the bullying and the kind of like, shut them down, shut them down, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a kind of conflict, which, which I just want to pull in this because like we have to, right? But I'm just going to go on the record. I th if nothing else, it doesn't even matter whether he's doing it or not. This is what's being done. I think that's one of the key things about what's happening with Ye is that there is the kind of conflict. He is facilitating the kind of conflict that the, the spirit of the left doesn't want. The kind of conflict that says it's the kind of conflict that kind of like that makes you be awake a little bit to be like what what is what is going on here, right? And I think that's really important because when someone's in temptations, right? Like when I'm dealing with someone who's in temptations, um, I have to wake them up somehow. I I. I I'm not, I can't placate them and be like, oh, well, you know, the person who you think offended you, even though they really didn't do anything, you know, it is their, like, I can't heaven ban someone that would, that would destroy their soul, right? No. Oh, no, sweetie. You know what? You are right. They are a bad person. And they really did. And it's like, no, no, no. Like, no, I don't have to necessarily call them, like, call them names, right? I have, it's my job to say, look um how you're feeling what you're thinking is is wrong right sure it's that conflict of me coming against that and saying like at the very least have you considered that maybe you're wrong have you considered right that's, that's the love thing. yeah that's love that's the thing that sparks their ability to if it's if it's possible begin to repent and i so, imagine with the child father like if you were to just tell a child they were right all the time yeah what That's you would not. produce would be a monster. Well, no, not what you would. That that is what's being produced. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like that's what our sister. Like, that's <laughs> my Papadia. She sent me this this like TikTok video, whatever, like a couple weeks ago, and it's basically like it was really brilliant because it's this one kid who's just like, you know, they the one videos were like they do both person, the mom and the kid, mm -hmm. the same actor. He's basically like. Basically, the, the child was being a, a terror. You know, mm -hmm. the mom was just basically begging, like, please don't, you know, hurt me, child, for me giving you, you know, hamburger instead of a hot dog, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But that, I mean, that's that's where we're at. And why are we there? I think everything we've been talking about has facilitated that. Yeah. And at the spirit of it is this thing of avoiding that conflict, because here's the thing. This is another thing of Antichrist because Jesus, I'm gonna throw this out too, something I've been thinking about. We need to, I just, we need to get a little bit sharper. And it's not enough for someone to be like, I'm all about Jesus Christ. That's not enough anymore. Mm -hmm. Because the Jesus Christ that everyone's wanting to push, it's it's the Jesus Christ that's just like, it's okay, Billy. You can do whatever sure. you want. Sure. Hey, Billy. You know what I mean? It's it's okay that you you know you want to be a polyamorous, uh, you know, crack smoking. Like that's the Jesus that everyone's pushing, right? And that's the Jesus that has nothing offensive to say. Yeah. That's that's the one that everyone goes like, 
Hey, yeah, that's Jesus. When you come and you say to someone, hey, you know, uh, if you live this way, you know, you're going to lose your soul. That's yeah. not love. Jesus would never say that. You know what I mean? Sure. That's someone who has not read the Gospels. Absolutely. And that's because he says it constantly. <laughs> yeah. And that's someone who's never met Christ. That's someone who's never met Christ. Right? Father, Father Stephen DeYoung. I'm sorry, really quick. Father Stephen DeYoung one time said, Oh, listen to how unchrist like Christ is being right now. Yeah. I was like, That's yeah. a really good way of putting that because he was yeah, yelling I mean, at someone. Don't presume that I came to bring peace, but a sword. And so this is, it's, it's, the other aspect of Christ is, is being um, preemptively buried, right? Does that make sense? So, sure. so it's- No, go ahead. Preemptively buried? Let's pre on that a little bit. Preemptively buried. So we're not there yet to where, I mean, in some regards, yes, because um, in parishes, and we're talking parishes, we're not even talking about the world. Excuse me, in parishes now, you know, I've had it in my own life where it's like people are like, oh, you're not a priest. I say this, I complain about all the time, right? You're not a priest, you're not loving because you actually called me out on something, right? That's in a parish. That's in a parish. We're even thinking about these huge mega churches. And like that's in an Orthodox parish where I don't know how this happens, but people are, I get it. I actually know how it happens. Forgive me. But Orthodoxy is all about the cross, suffer, shut up, asceticism. You know what I'm saying? That that's orthodoxy, right? Uh, and that's in that's in our tradition where people can't even hear that. Imagine all of these mega churches and all these places where it's like, you know, Jesus is just there to tickle you with a pink feather and give you champagne, and which is just so demonic, right? So that narrative and that, you know, um, facade of this fake, this, you know, this, this false veneer of who Christ is, that has what's been, you know, planted, the seeds have been planted and watered and watered and watered. And that's, that's the leftist Jesus. Sure. The Jesus of the left is like, no man, like Jesus would never say a hard word. And, and like, that's, I don't know what Jesus you follow, but that's not Jesus. And it's like, okay, right? And so it's been preemptively put that way because now when Christ begins to start making movements to chastise, to correct, people are, are, are have been conditioned socially, psychologically, spiritually to reject that. And not only that, but think it's demonic attack. Yeah, like yeah. They, they think it's like, oh, I must have done something to make Satan mad. Or it's yeah, like, yeah. or you did something to make God mad. Which I'm going to I'm gonna go out there. I mean, it's going to be a hard word for people to hear. But like, you got to be careful with that because that can be one small step towards the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Right. Because when you begin to start attributing the things of God to the devil and then you get into that, that's the kind of thing that can be like it's unforgivable. Because the means by which you would wake up and, and repent of it, you can't even see it anymore. That mm -hmm. path is hidden to you. Sure. Right. Because you've been conditioned so much to reject that, to reject the medicine of itself, to reject the medicine himself, that it doesn't matter what happens, you've attributed evil for good and good for evil to such a degree that your conscience is seared and it's not even about. God cutting you off, you've cut yourself off. 100%. So this preemptive, sure. this kind of back ending or front loading, I don't know which one it is, but it's, I, I see it. I see it because it's playing out. I mean, I, I, all of us have had this kind of experience. If, if you have any relatives who are not Orthodox, let alone maybe even not Christian, you've had some sensitive conversations with them um you've been called unkind or unloving right and because of the um these other facets of it because it isn't just the like be nice be kind it's some of the other things where it's as a christian you feel like you can't have any sort of backbone about something so then the need to push back in love um 
you know, when it talks about in, in the last days about people being lovers of self, I don't think that's just a matter of being so uh, egocentric and hedonistic, although that's definitely there, right? I think it also has to get back into this thing with being cowardly. And because <laughs> they're, they're, you, you see what I'm saying? Totally, and, and totally. That, that, that being a, because yeah. a coward, you know, the on-ramp to cowardice is self-love. Oh, yes. You know yes. what I mean? Well, because you love your, you, you love your well-being more than you love Christ, which is why you won't bear witness. Or the more important, not, no, no, not the more important thing. But another aspect of this whole thing is, is like, you love yourself more than you love the other. Because yeah. you're not wanting to correct. You're yeah. not wanting to suss out. If you just give a kid an iPad to yeah. get them to shut up, that's not love. That's I don't want to deal with you. So, yes. yeah. Oh. Ooh, so, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, so selfish. It's and, so and here's selfish. The thing. Here's the thing. <sighs> Lots of people are guilty of that. Oh, sure. Yeah. You, you, I, mean, you know I mean, I've been guilty of it at times with my kids, but I do try to stay active, you know actively I mean? not do it. But I fall. You know what I mean? Oh, I without fall. a doubt. Like, and so and so if, when we keep that in mind, it's like imagine people who don't even question it. Like yeah. those of us yeah, who know yeah, that it's yeah, wrong. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, we're everyone's guilty of it. I'm guilty of being mm -hmm. like, you know, put a Bible movie on. I say yep. it's a Bible movie, but it's still putting the kid in front of the TV because I just sure. can't deal with them. You know what I mean? Guilty. Okay. Boom. There's my confession. So, but that's us who know it's wrong and are trying to struggle against it. Think about people who are like, I never even you're crazy. Them. Like yeah. what's wrong yeah. with that? You know what I mean? And so this kind of gets us back now. We've been back to the technology thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because what it's facilitating uh. is it's facilitating the softening and mm. it, and it, it's so funny because again, <laughs> my papadia, God bless her, man. Like one of the things that can drive people crazy about her is that, um, okay, for those of you who's you know, you saw, I don't know, I know you did, Andrew, uh, or uh, Super. Did you, Andrew? Did you see any of the the Yay interview? No, I I haven't had the time to sit down and watch it yet. Well, there's a portion in it. Where it's just kind of like he won't let it go. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, okay, we get the joke, ha ha ha, or like, okay, we get what you're trying to get. Okay, like, okay, but really, like, you you could see Alex Jones be like, okay, but really, like Hitler, you know what I mean? And he just would not break character, right? Okay. Well, my Vapati does the same thing, except it's not character for her, where it's just like she will hold to things and make something not difficult, but will Don't not go weird. for the convenient thing. Yeah. It's just like, no, no, no. Let's just do this because it's convenient. And like, God bless her. I'm thankful for her because, you know, she's leading me into the asceticism and that. So she's like, no, that's weak. No, that's weak. And it's just like, no, no, no. You don't understand. Let's just, please, let's just do this. She's like, no, we're not doing that. That's weak. Sure. I think this is really important to say because these are those those types of moments where we just think I'm just going to compromise here. I'm just going to compromise a little bit there. I'm starting to see more and more like that's what's been undermined with the technology. Absolutely. I mean, that's actually the value proposition of the technology. Is it, it is. The value, a, it will make your life easier. It's a pacifier. You, you know, in all you the way in all the things, but people don't see this, the spiritual, like they see, oh, it'll make my life easier. Like that means it's on its face good. Well, it's not morally bad. That That's the problem. There see, you go. The problem is it's not mm -hmm. morally wrong, but it's spiritually detrimental. Sure. That's right? what, pe and that's what people can't, they can't, they, can't, they don't that, have the vocabulary why, like, for that. That's yeah. a great example too, because I'm always trying to get people to understand like it's not moralism. And I think this is maybe if you still struggle when I say it's not moralism, maybe this will help flesh it out, right? It's not you're not morally wrong for giving your kid the iPad as long as it isn't something like salacious and porn or something, obviously, right? It's like, okay, you gave your kid the iPad watching like 
you know, we need the wild, poop. you know, wild crats or whatever, sure. right? It's not morally wrong, right? But I would argue it's it's spiritually detrimental to some sort of micro increment. It right? is, it is. And I will say this you praised your wife. I'm gonna praise mine really quick. That like my wife, that is a hard and fast line she has stuck to you throughout all of our kids' life. And like they get little to no screen time. And you know, again, I don't mean to like I'm not saying we're sitting here like if you guys do it, you know, I'm not sitting here trying to be like in judgment of you. It's not like one of those things. I just want to say that like my wife has like refused to do this. She's like, I will not let them. And like each time she has, she's regretted it. And like not only that, but then later on, it's kind of independently like proven that she was right. And the thing that I want to praise her for is like this woman suffers because of it. It's three o'clock. The kids are tired. Maybe Ruben hasn't napped. Little Nikolai hasn't napped. Um, she. It's three o'clock. Her coffee's definitely worn off. She. This is the time to stick him in front of a TV, and she won't do it. And she continues to suffer for it, even though like there are times where maybe maybe she should just for like twenty minutes, because like Ruben or little Nikolai does has doesn't have the attention span for it. He just walks away. He doesn't really care what's going on on the screen, but like. She refuses to because, like, um, we, you know, started to get weird feelings about it. And then it was kind of confirmed by, like, a couple of different people that, like, um, yeah, Father's right. It's not, like, a moral thing. It can't be, like, a moral thing because, yeah, morally there's nothing wrong with it. But, like, there is this, like, you're laying the foundation. I think the Father's talk about for the first seven years is when a soul is being created. Like, is when the soul is being, like, firmed. So, like, um, the foundations are being laid. And like that kind of stuff leaves air pockets in the foundation, you know, to a degree of like abuse, you know, of like if you're like letting them watch like. Yeah, but even but even what does it do to the parent? Right. You, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. The yeah. Parent and like and the avoidance of the cross. Yeah, right? exactly. Because, because then what happens is I think what's an even bigger impact on the kid is. Not so much what, not so much them watching TV or watching the screen at, you know, four or five. It's actually later on, they watched mom and dad just become depleted yep. spiritually and, sure. not, and not have the means to, to struggle. Right. Because yeah. when, when you think about, when you, when you think about how, uh, All the virtues are are linked together, but so are the vices. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. And so these things, the devil, the the devil's down with the quick, um, you know, uh, instant gratification for sure. But the devils play a long game, and I I think that's the thing to understand. The devils play a long game, and so that's why, you know, this aspect of the pleasure. And people not recognizing like the pleasure and the ease, and the comfort as primarily like the seduction of the devil versus, you know, I'm scared at night or whatever is they don't realize that what's being set up in the long run is your your it's facilitating your inability to discern and therefore to fight. Man. And that inability to discern and therefore to fight, that's what gets people undone. Because that, but, or even to fight again, to fight on the wrong team, or to fight on the wrong team. Because this is this is where people end up. Like, I don't like no one. I don't ever deal with someone who's like, bam, out of nowhere. Like, out of nowhere. I don't know how this happened. Like, I just woke up one night and, you know, I was on a crazy bender. Like that doesn't, you know what I mean? It's always like, okay, well, where were you at? You know three sure. weeks ago three months ago like where did where did it start right because it's that thread yeah. and that thread being pulled it's it's being exacerbated by you know not just what we're feeding ourselves but how we're feeding ourselves you know spiritually psychologically through all of this stuff you know and it's facilitating an environment by which our discernment we don't have discernment yeah we don't even because again, um, 
what's being given to us as something that's good is actually very detrimental to us. And I would, I would argue getting back to like, you know, what, what is it really? I think it's, I think it's intentional in that sense. Same thing. Well, this, this makes me think father, this makes me think that like, you know, they're presenting this thing as heaven banning as like, well, this is what we're going to do as to kind of quarantine these people off or whatever. And it, they'll stop the toxicity on the internet. But now you saying that is making me think like, Oh, actually, I think people might actually pay for that Twitter. Yeah. Like if the AIs were good enough, people would be like, well, why would I want to be on real Twitter? Just give me all the bots that agree with me and I'll, that'll be my social inter well, that'll be my social media interaction. I mean, you know, I don't think I don't think that's crazy because mm -mm. how many times do people go back to look to see? I mean, I don't know. Is this still of a course? Thing? Yes. How many likes did I get? Of how course. Many likes did I get? You know what I mean? Yes. I mean isn't that? So imagine that if it was just giving everybody a ton of like you would just automatically if you paid yeah. the premium fee. Yeah. Right. And maybe yeah. they don't even tell you. It's just like, yeah. well, you know, if you want the maximum reach, if you want the maximum number of people and then just over time, this is why you say like over time, the bots and you're like, man, I've got 100,000 people who follow me who think yeah. that I'm fantastic. And it's like it's all bots. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right, and you can't tell the difference. Saint Theophon the Recluse talks about like limiting your children's like exposure to the pleasures of this world because you want to keep mm -hmm. that hard line there of being like, yeah, okay, you can kind of peek over the wall. It's nice. It mm -hmm. looks pretty. Now come back, like come back, you know. And I think that like that's one of the reasons why I don't really look at the the comment section on episodes of our mm -hmm. show because I will, but the few times I've seen people praise. I get, it gets that endorphin rush that like or that serotonin drop or whatever that like everybody is looking for all the time from um, social media and and by the way there's no immunity or inoculation from that mm -mm. it's actually the reverse like what it's like it's it's like the well the more you have received the more you need oh right so there's no there's no way of like. Yeah, you just can't expose yourself to it. And and you infinite, can, you have to tell people like stop. And infinite like, jest. Stop, stop it. Yeah. In the book Infinite Jest, there's this guy who's talking with the sage guru or whatever. It doesn't really matter. He's talking about wanting to be a famous uh, uh, tennis player because that's what the whole book is about. Is about tennis players. And um, he's talking to the sage guru and he's talking about like the, his desire to be featured in these articles to have like his you know all the and the poster. And like he's talking about this craving, it hurts his soul so much because he has this gigantic craving inside of him. And the guru says, like, there is no opposite feeling to what you're feeling. There is no opposite to this. This is a pit. You'll just keep pouring things into. Mm -hmm. You'll never fill this up. Like, this is just the thing that you just kind of keep throwing things into. And you'll never get this quite satisfactory feeling that you're looking for i mean mm -hmm. billy piper from doctor who just came out today whether it be like in publicity stunt or whatever she talks about the horrible aspects of fame like the oh, awful bad. aspects of like what it's like to be famous and i believe it i mean what yeah. was the master say one to you and men speak well of you mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. i mean uh, yeah there's no worse or more destructive addiction. I will definitely tell you that. There's no worse or more destructive addiction than celebrity in whatever like vein that it has. And the longer that it goes on, because the, the withdrawal from celebrity is... That's got to be... And now I, oh, man. I've watched, I'm watching my... Uh, or I've watched my co-stars go through it, right? Like... You I at least had LA. You probably saw it a lot. Like has no, been. I was on a TV show. Sure. I am but one. I'm, I am not... one. <laughs> I am a has been. <laughs> right. Like I used to walk around. I couldn't go to the grocery store without people stopping me to, to take pictures. It happened all over the world. It, it places that where people didn't speak English. And then all of a sudden, when one day that stops, when one day oh, I can just walk out here. Oh, nobody knows who I am. Now, luckily, I'm a bit of like a, a, a loner and, and an antisocial person. But like watching my co-stars struggle through that, it's it destroyed them. Mm -hmm. Like it's the worst kind of withdrawal you could possibly have because 
it's it's a direct you built up your identity your your self-worth is all about the fact that oh look at look at all of these people who tell me i'm great and who are like oh can i take a picture with you and uh, when that becomes normalized in your life to the point where if you go out and that doesn't happen you get depressed you're in a very you're in a a bad you're in a bad situation right there but see everyone's in that situation now that's and that well the heaven banning right is gonna create that well well it's gonna um scale amplify. it it'll scale it yeah it'll, it'll put it at scale it, right? yeah I mean, amplify again it. everyone's like that i mean that's why people i mean people don't even do people even talk about like internet addiction anymore because it's so ubiquitous mm -hmm. right like, but that's well, because where, we're all addicted to the internet. right. That that's that's where it's at, you know. That's where it's at, and it, it's 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 so crazy to me because we are heading to this thing where it's like the those of us who have been preparing for it and are going to be like, oh, thank God, you know, like if we get put into you know social ghettos, like mm -hmm. you know, we can't like as they're suggesting, it's like, oh, we just can't access you know, popular media or the internet as it's understood, you know, whatever that might look like, right? Mm -hmm. We, like, those of us who'd be like, oh, thank God, you know, it's almost like the the junkie was just begging for someone to find him out. Like, please, like, please mm -hmm. someone, like, find me, you know, just, like, bust me so I can, like, get sure. broken free. You know, like, like, that's a thing. But for most people, it it is more real to them. Their online life is more real to them. And I, we're not even talking about what is it, meta or anything like that. We're right. talking their online presence, their just online presence. Yeah. The normal day to day, yeah. average social media. If you guys want to them. see like a situation, the warping effects of this? I don't know why, but I've seen this guy around for a long time and I've only recently kind of looked into who he was and I, Again, I don't have social media, so I'm sure I'm the last mm. person to hear about this guy. But this Nick Avocado. Oh, you know, Nick Nick Avocado Avocado or whatever. The, whatever. the kid who the kid who ate himself to that cries and eats. Oh, oh my god. Oh, boy. It, Talk it, about like, hell. Talk about I, hell. That's what I'm saying. Like, and you know what? I don't know. That that is that is like his experience. It's it's kind of like a horror movie, isn't it? It really, it really is, is. It really is like a person who was like in hell on earth. Yeah. And like, I don't know, like, because like I've watched mm. like a couple of interviews with him where he's supposed to kind of just be like him. And there's no way that the way he's acting is actually who he is. Right. Like, or well, it has become that it has become that. But like, but that's kind of my point is it's like, so he has to constantly be on and throwing these temper tantrums and drop stuff and start crying and scream into the camera. And he has to wear the belly shirts that show his like mm -hmm. big gut hanging down mm -hmm. all the time. He has to constantly be debasing himself, like like lying naked on the ground, covered in ramen like it. it and so then this and like if you look at who he was when he started normal. Like, a just normal, a very normal person. Yeah. And, you know, he's Ukrainian. So, but it, but I mean, that's how is that not like demon? I don't know if we would call it possession, but how is it not demonic influence? It's like, how it, could it be anything think but? It might, it might be possession. That's right. Might like, be possession. I'm being yeah. very literal here. You know, being sure. It, it, we don't know. You know what I mean? It, it might, he might, it might be. And that's the and thing and is do you do you bring yourself? Forgive me, Father. Like, do you bring yourself into a state of possess? Like, did he open himself into a state of possession by going down that path? By the path of needing more attention, attention, attention? Was he also opening self himself yes. up to the demons? Yes, yes. It could have been a, a, a myriad of other things, but fundamentally, yes. Right, and yeah. that, and that's the thing is that, um. It doesn't have to be you wandered into the CD, you know, mm -hmm. uh, occult magic store. <laughs> you know what I mean? On the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I I think that's the thing that people aren't, um, like, 
all you have to do it on the one hand it's it's way harder than people realize but on the other hand it's way easier than people realize too you know what i mean and the reality is ultimately is like when someone's suffering from from something like that god allows it for their salvation god allows that demonic temptation that demonic <laughs> and even you know god forbid that possession to call that person to greater virtue mm. that's why god allows it god allows that chastisement in the hopes that it will it will facilitate ultimate ultimately not in the short term but ultimately the 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 it will be a means for that person's salvation and that's that's the reality you know what i mean but the experience of that is horrific messy ugly like all that stuff you know and it and it it isn't about you don't need to be doing a ouija board you know at your you know friend's sleepover for that to happen it, it it can happen with you jumping in and just making an idol out of fill in the blank you know what i mean and assenting and giving rights that's you know? the that the giving rights the giving that's of your, the thing giving rights to the to those intelligences to function in your life right because you know like it's like this right like uh you know a real common one right young girls who um they know that they shouldn't do x y and z but they do it because they like the attention sure and and the and the setup for that is there's nothing wrong with them but the thing started whispering to them mimetically right something's not your something's wrong with you something's wrong with you right so you know it started off with something's wrong with you you need to be thinner something's wrong with you your hair needs to be curly if it's straight it needs to be straight if it's curly you know what i mean sure and now it's like something's wrong with you maybe you're not the right gender you know what i mean oh something <laughs> something's wrong with you and like just bit by bit listening to that giving assent to it and the next thing you know it's like i don't know what else you would call it because you know, here's another thing, like the level of, of sickness that would cause someone to mutilate themselves, if that's not demonically inspired, I don't know. Uh, yeah, for real. You know what I mean? So nobody sits down to eat the food that that dude eats without some kind of demonic inspiration. You know, like, I mean, yeah, it, it's like. And here's the thing. I mean, low hanging fruit. Gluttony is not like, first of all, there's no sin anymore. That's the first thing. Yeah. But if you do talk about sin. The only sins that are left are maybe pedophilia, mm -hmm. maybe, <laughs> sure. but, but like that's soon out the door. Oh yeah, like, the it only seems to be being normalized by yeah, the day. Like the only real sins left are being mean. You know what I mean? Like, sure. but is that even a sin? It's not a sin. I'm being facetious. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. Okay. Like, okay. Okay. It's like, you know, because getting back in all seriousness, like gluttony, people like. Like, man, gluttony is one of the major ones, you know, like, mm -hmm. like gluttony will lead you to some really, really, really heavy, dark things, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, it, and man, I'm not even gluttony, gormandizing, mm -hmm. I don't even know what gormandizing is, you know, gormandizing is, you know, way more deadly, it's way more subtle. What is that, Father? Well, it's a fixation to the gormandizing, like, mm -hmm. there's an absolute it's like it's not the, it's it's yeah it's a deep a deep fixation yeah deep fixation like, so gluttony people think of gluttony and gluttony is generally assume like associated with the quantity of food mm -hmm. think of gourmandizing as the same coin but the quality of it mm -hmm. so it's not even doesn't even have to be a lot but it's just the um the fixation the seeking the the looking to it for consolation um it, it's it's the other side of the coin gluttony being you know it, it gourmandizing is in the category of gluttony but it's it's the quality of the food as opposed to the, the quantity mm -hmm. and a lot of people get 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 hit there and know? turning it into an idol turning it into an idol yeah an idol and because there's no i mean obviously 
good quality food is better than better than sure not good quality food i mean that's just objectively sure. the case but sure. taking sure. it but the royal path right like taking sure. it too far to where you're going you're doing this thing where you've gone above and beyond and yeah, it's, the it, is it has carries food. all this meat it has all carries all this additional meaning and things yeah. about yeah. yeah the problem isn't quality of food the problem is quality of food without thanksgiving uh, it probably is quality of food without you know quality food for the sake of you know like an idol you know that, that's the problem so and also i found in that vein of like a uh of the combination of pride as well mm -hmm. right of like i'm the i have access to this food so therefore I am better than everyone else. I ran into that a lot in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. in like the celebrity chef scene. I you mean, know what I mean, you know, it, it, it's funny to me because I'm thinking to myself, it's like, oh man, it, in some regards, this has been an interesting dipping of the toe into like a deep dive of the of the of the vices, mm. you know what I mean? because because I I think one of the things that that's really interesting is that we don't even there's not even a concept for that in our society anymore like uh pride is self-esteem is self-esteem and mm. and pride is what you need if you're going to climb the ladder yeah Avarice, well, pr pride pride there's a whole month <laughs> it's a whole month was a day then a week now a month yeah like yeah it's it's it, it's a whole thing right and even avarice like Greed is good. Greed, Gordon Gecko. I was just going to say, greed is good. You know, it, it's like, um, and and getting into gluttony, like gluttony has become chic. I mean, what's what's we were talking about her there a couple weeks ago. Fizzo. Uh, oh, Lizzo. Lizzo. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, all, all the all the those plus someone, size models, body positivity, body positivity. Thing. That's what like, someone, that's a back door for gluttony, man. One of our many wonderful. Uh, viewers needs to go through and find all the times that fathers tried just like out of blue just try and pronounce the celebrity's name like it, there this has just been a reoccurring thing that like you'll just be like you'll just it's just slightly off so you'd be like ed sherkin or like whatever ed sharon or uh, I, I guess that's me being a dad I can't, no that's, I that's a total I, dad thing eight kids Personally, eight kids and you can't remember anybody's name that's how yeah, it, that's what happens I, just, <laughs> I think it's personally endearing it's yeah, not of like it is because it's not a, dad a jab yeah, it's a dad. i i always take it as a little bit of a source of pride when someone's talking to me about uh popular whoever and i'm like i have no idea who you're talking about yeah. like yeah. i don't i don't yeah. I, there's like a new releases on my spotify I don't know who any of these people are. Oh and yeah, I've, I've watched, reached. The, I've reached that point. I told myself I would never reach I that point. Videos I said, like I'll, top I'll never 10 be most guy. influential like hip hop artists now, and I was like, I don't oh, know. No. I don't know who any of these people are. I don't know oh, who no. any of them are. Yeah, but... but we talked about this the other day too. Is like because it's, it's objectively bad. Like baby goth. Like what? What in the world? Yeah, I know. It's um, it's not good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Father, you're you're right because like if I if I point out like you are objectively overweight like like objectively you are going to run into health problems mm -hmm. and i am the last person that should be like god has gifted me with the ability to only get slightly tubby when i eat like garbage like when i started eating meat again i ate like garbage for like a month and probably gained like 10 to 15 pounds so it's not a particular cross of mine that i slip a little bit on a regimented diet and I gained 20, 25 pounds. Like that's not something I have to worry about. But what I can say is, is like objectively speaking, like you're breathing hard, you're sweating and the air conditioning is on. Like you don't look particularly like, and like, it's not about like beauty. Like you're not trying to like, but like you have to realize like there is a certain element of like, I know that this is kind of unnatural to a degree for you to look as heavy as you are no but andrew there is something about beauty because i think that that's really in this whole body positivity thing that's but, the that's the most dangerous part what i'm that, trying to like, say is people are being gaslit about because beauty is beauty is visceral beauty we don't is, have a choice of what we see as beautiful there's objective beauty yes. what i'm not what i'm saying is it's not a beauty about like attracting men like i'm not saying like well if you lost 50 pounds you'd be more attractive to men yeah that's but they would but they would though 
but they would, but that's not what I'm trying to I emphasize mean... to this person. <laughs> this right. imaginary person sitting in my office, <laughs> talking to me or whatever. But, uh, but not... I think, but, but Andrew, I think that that's the, like, that's, I think that's the, that's the slip with so much of this is that it's like, if you can get people to just like not trust their lying eyes, basically, I feel like yes. that's what a lot of this is, right? Is that it's like the demons are like, no, 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 don't trust your lying eyes. Don't trust your lying eyes. Because his father says, then when it's like, when you see the demon, you're like, oh, I'm not seeing the demon right now. Oh, yeah. So therefore, if, I'm not fighting. If I see fight. like a 100 pound overweight woman walking in yoga pants and like a belly shirt, and then I'm like, okay, objectively, that's gross. Like that, that's just kind of gross to see it it like the then the thought enters my brain like well who are you to say what's beauty and what's not beautiful and it's like okay that's the temptation right there See, but it's here's the thing here's the thing that's not a natural response you've no been, you that that's conditioned you've been right? conditioned to it that's mm -hmm. been conditioned to say well who are you and so that like that's kind of getting us back on track the thing is like um the straining that this conditioning has happened and how did it happen, right? How did yeah. how how did so? I guess if it like not that it's necessary, but it's this other kind of portion of of I would say to people, um, really start taking seriously your intake. Take more seriously your intake of what you are, you know, feeding on. Um, and one of the best ways to do that is to either just cut it down, get some accountability or have purpose, have intention mm. sure. mm -hmm. because, because if you have purpose and intention, what you'll find is, so it, it, it's, uh, it's in the same vein of what I was talking about this, this last week in regards of the, of a vow, you know, and, you know, a vow is is a way is the way to hone and direct your self will, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is is a vow is a way to to hone and, and repent and and it's uh, like a vow, like a rudder on a ship. It'd be like the thing to no, that's not right. That's it, not it. It so a vow is the way that you engage your will to the glory of God for, for your salvation. Does that make sense? Uh, like if yeah. you make a vow with God, it's like what, what facilitates that vow is, is, is the will, mm -hmm. right? The, the heart is the thing that may have you catch a vision of what to make a vow over, mm -hmm. but the will is what facilitates it. Right. So. Cause you can't promise something if you don't have free will, you can't promise something if you don't have free will. And you use your will all the time, just not for good things. Sure. Right? So mm -hmm. it's so it's not a matter of like cutting your will off in that sense, because you know, ninety nine percent of you aren't monastics. You know, well, ninety eight percent of you. <laughs> I know two percent that are. Yeah. But like, you know, the ninety eight percent of you aren't monastics. So it's like the cutting off of your will in that context doesn't apply. Sure. Um, it does in marriage, but what I'm trying to get at is this. I this insight into like well what do you do with your will right like you have to do something with it because it's a real problem right and the, it's the reason why i mean what is the purpose of magic with a k right um the purpose of magic is to get you to hone the will yeah to achieve your you know manifest desires, your desires right yeah. so the inverse of that is to you know um for us uh, who are living in the world of monastics? It's like you are needing to hone your will in the proper way. So a vow can do that for you. But like in this context, I think having intention is real important because if you say, "Well, I'm not going to," you may even say to yourself, "I am not going to completely like not be engaged on the internet." But at least what I can do is I'm going to be very intentional with what I'm looking at. I'm going to, I'm going to be very intentional about not just when, or not just what I'm looking at, but like even how I'm looking at it. Right. Sure. 
I'm not going to mindlessly just kind of like be checked out. It's like, I'm, I'm actually going to be looking to, I'm going to use it as a tool to build my life. Sure. Right. Cause there's good stuff on there. And, and I think, I think the thing is, is I, I'm all about the practical ways in which we can navigate the times we're living in. Sure. Right? Because the fact of the matter is, is that there's a real danger in passively just scrolling. Doom you're, scrolling. You're, you're you're putting you're you're putting impressions on your your soul in ways that that you don't you're not aware of until you begin to pray. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Until you begin to pray, until you begin to do the things you need to do, then you're like, oh man. It's like what was I doing? What's yeah. going on? Yeah. Like this what one rando thing, which is, you know, again, maybe morally wasn't wrong. Sure. Right. But now that I'm trying to pray, it's like you stupid YouTube it's short. In the way. In my it's mind. in the way. Yeah. It's in the way. Yeah. 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 And which is, which is notable because it's like, ooh, is that its purpose? Mm -hmm. I mean, is that what it's there? Is it? I've thought that a few times where I'm like, wait. It, does that thing exist? Was that thing made to prevent me from being able to get deep in prayer today? Like, well, remember, is that what that was made for? Well, remember, attention equals worship. Right. Yep. I think so, Father's talked about that the phone specifically is meant to counteract several spiritual practices that are essential. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it, it literally, it, it, it like, the phone, the medium of the way it works, like the way that it scrolls, all those things it's it affects the processes in which like your news functions like it just it does mm -hmm. it absolutely does. you know what i mean yeah it does so the ability to apprehend the unseen it, it it's it's um it's like the it's like the devil just put a bat jammer in everyone's hand and said go ahead like short yourself mm -hmm. out it's, it's, mm -hmm. you know what's happened um so i mean may god help us but i think the thing is we we need to really begin to be aware of it because everything we're always talking about none of those things stop or slow down just because they're not in in your face and in fact because certain things aren't in your face but other things are that's a sign that like it's time to it's time to not only maintain vigilance but become even more vigilant sure Father, I think it's very interesting that, you know, we're talking about George Hotz and it's like his claim to fame was basically taking the governor, taking the chains off the phone, off the off the first iPhone. That's that was his claim to fame, right, was to make it more potent because yeah. it was just restricted to one carrier. You know, he was like, no, 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 the I'm going to jailbreak it. And that's the same guy who's now talking about we're going to build demons to follow you around and tell you how good your sin is. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, sorcerer is a tech, yeah. uh, <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Technocrats and techno sorcerers. Hey. Incredible. I would I would play that class in D D. Um, so uh I got three questions for you. You mean cyberpunk? Yeah, well, I was just about to say. Yeah. Shadow Shadow Run. That shadow Run. The, yeah. Shadow, shadow run. run. They had shadow that run. in there. Yeah. Um, so um Okay, I got three questions for you, Father, for the end of the show. Um, the first one is, according, and it's going to be a silly one. The first one's going to be a silly one. And then I have two other questions. Uh, if I can remember the other one, but I can't remember the other one is. Uh, according to the lore that you know, it, with a character that you're very, Wolverine, according to the character that you know about Wolverine, and the, the, the thing that you've grown up with, where should his claws come out of when he pops the claws? Like what part of his hand? Because I've noticed this because I've been reading a lot of X Men recently. Well, I'll tell you right now. I can tell you, like, just to get really straight up with it, they actually began to transition his claws coming out from in between his knuckles. With when did it start transitioning? Because I have a theory. Well. I'm going to say probably um, Barry Windsor Smith's 
uh, Weapon X, which is incredible. Barry Windsor Smith yes. is one of my favorite artists. But he, when he did Weapon X, that was like, um, because I think even looking back on Frank Miller's first uh, miniseries, okay, like, when he's in it, Japan and stuff, yeah. When you read Frank, because you know he had the metal like tunnels on top of his gloves, okay. and they would come out of the tunnels, and like yeah, it's coming out of his hand, but it's like on top of it's like right here, yeah, right here, yeah. But Barry Windsor Smith, when he did the Weapon X, it was like he's naked and all that stuff. And it's like... There's the blood dripping. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's where you start kind of seeing it moving from there to getting like in between and a more anatomically correct of like in between the knuckles. I thought it was maybe the movie. When the movie came out, that's... Oh, no, 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 kind of... no, 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 no. Yeah, I, it's I think before it that. Before then, yeah. Okay. Okay. Then the second question that I wanted to remember is a lot of people have written in that I, I wanted to remember and did remember is, is there a proper lives of saints to be reading? Cause we talk about reading lives of saints. Are you talking about going out and buying an individual books? Like the yeah, life yeah, of yeah, St. Yeah, Luke, okay. the surgeon. No problem. So there's a general term synesthetic on which people will use, but like, th like there's a couple, right? So there's a lives of the saints. Um, one that was written by St. Dimitri Rostov which is great, um, very long, it's like long form, you know? Uh, and then there's the, you know, Synexadion that's been compiled by a couple of different um, monastics. There's one that's put out by um, Sebastian Press. Um, they put out one, and even to some degree, the the, the prologue is kind of like a Synexadion too. I sure. mean, it has the Lodge of the Saints in there, you know? Um, and there's one more which I'm someone I'm sure will clickety clackety put it in there, but there's one more that, that's for sure, like a Greek synexion, Greek lives of the saints that's um that's put out, and there's and there's even like specialty ones like there's uh I think it's I'm trying to think uh what must what con there's a convent um. Buena Vista, Colorado, I think it is. But they put out like the lives of women martyrs, the you know life of the mother of God, uh, things like that. Um, like the Book of the Holy Prophets, um, great stuff. But like, just to answer the question simply, for right now, for sure, I can tell you there's the Saint Dimitri Rostov, and I think you can get that through Jordanville. And then there's the, the Synaxedion that you can get through Sebastian Press. Right on. But any lives of the any collection of lives of the saints is a cynic scenario. Yeah. Um I don't remember what the collection is, but there's a really wonderful collection that's individualized books, not one bound thing. But that's how I read the lives of Saint of Saint Nicholas, uh Saint Papa Papa Nicholas, mm -hmm. um, which is fantastic. And we have them at our church, and you can just borrow them. So if you ever really need them, swing on by. Um, then Ben sent me this question quite a long time ago it's kind of an easy one more or less um basically the essential uh, gist of the question is and i'm ben i'm terribly sorry it's taken me so long to get to this question it kind of fell through the cracks a little bit um he basically essentially he's wondering why do we say forgive me instead of i'm sorry like you know like uh well, well I think someone could argue some semantics there, but I would say that, you know, forgive me is, is a request, you know, and it requires like actually asking. We tend to have it become an affect and we say, forgive me, like, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Sure. But we should always have it in the sense of like, we're, we actually, it's a, it's a, it's a movement of humility. Please like, forgive me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, was, I was wrong. And I need you to offer unto me the remittance of my debt. Sure. Whereas I'm sorry is like, that sucks. You and know, and that's what are you gonna do? Yeah, but Nobody's like, nerfing. You know what I mean? Um, so you can say, I'm sorry, forgive me, but I'm sorry doesn't replace forgive me from my perspective. Yeah. I, there's just orthodox language that we learn. And that's definitely one of them that it's, it's more 
it's a more divine language. It's a more godly language. And I, and I yes, it, well said. And I would also add this point. This I hope we could you know begin to move culture a little bit here when I say this. You know, there's a certain thing which um, I'm known to you know drive people crazy with this, but it's it's good. I'm not going to give it up. Um, when you say to me, I'm sorry that I made you feel blah, 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 or you say to me, I'm sorry, whatever, I'll never accept that. And in fact, you know, spiritual children may or may not have had me kind of go after you about that. I was like, I won't drop that because it's that's just you trying to avoid like your sin in the area. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Is it the I'm sorry or I'm sorry I made you feel? Yeah, I'm sorry I made you feel. I'm sorry. It's like I'm sorry. Did... I'm sorry if you. I'm sorry if you were hurt by the thing. Exactly. That I did. That's not yeah. an apology. That's not. That's not asking forgiveness. You know what I mean? You need to like the proper way we would do the. the... I'm sorry you didn't handle that correctly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right, forgive uh, me for what I did. I yeah, did that. Forgive, forgive me for, for what I forgive did. Me. Forgive me. Forgive me for what I did. You know, and that and that's the thing. Even, you know getting to this place where it's like yeah forgive man of god right mm -hmm. man of god the saint uh, nectarios movie the saint nectarios movie i can't remember exactly what's the situation like um he's he's talking about something something that happened i think he's talking about like his spiritual daughters he's like they're coming here for this or that and the principal, who's like a total secularist, he like loses his mind and says, you know, I'm sick of, you know, you're trying to make all the men priests. Now you're going to have, you know, women here be nuns. And like he throws the books off the desk. Sure. And the St. Antares is like, forgive me, I've made you angry. Yeah. That was the yeah. most, one of the most powerful moments. Yeah. So powerful. Powerful. Because that's like, that's igniting a passion in another person, correct? Like, Yeah. And that's, and to see, here's the other thing that's the difference between are you actually becoming orthodox mm -hmm. or do you just have like or is, or is orthodoxy quote unquote your larping kind of like moral code do you, sure. you see what i'm saying yeah totally it's like oh i'm orthodox you know i do ancient things <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. okay okay <laughs> okay uh, that goes on a shirt Okay. That goes on a shirt. I'm, I'm orthodox. orthodox. I, do I do ancient things. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Now that needs to be on the that needs to be on the road path mug, you know? Yeah, yeah that's like, so funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. So that's versus good. yeah, forgive me. It, Cause and, and getting to the point where you're actually you you get it. You mm -hmm. it's, yeah, I, I have actually wronged you. You know what I mean? Sure. I have actually whatever. That that's that's spirituality. That's that's really orthodoxy, you know. That's that's the last the we can end on the the one of the things I heard a priest say one time was like during the kiss of peace when we go ask for forgiveness from one another, he's like, "Well, why am I going and apologizing to this person I've never talked to them before?" And it's like, "Well, maybe that's the sin. You've yeah. never talked to them." Before. Oh, You've beautiful! Never them, like, wow, you that's them. beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um. Okay, gentlemen, I think that's it. Uh, I think we're coming up. We think we did two hours. Um, mm -hmm. I want to, I don't remember his name. I should have looked it up beforehand, but we have not shouted out the dude that is doing our thumbnails. You are killing it. Oh, yeah, uh, he's killing it. Yeah, absolutely killing it. I should have started it off, the show off saying this. I, I And I meant to look up your name. I, I have it on my phone. I just forgot to look it I up. I will. Okay, I will. thank you. Give him it's the Jack, recognition. Jack, I don't know if we want to give, we want to dox him with his last name, but it's Jack. Yeah, Jack. Jack, you're killing it. The The lion that you did for a couple episodes ago, fantastic. Oh. I absolutely, it's like, that's beautifully rendered. You're an artist. You got to learn how to take a compliment without getting prideful. And I'm just saying, you did a great job. You've been killing it. And the other thing I want to say is, we chose Jack, but we had a number of submissions you guys oh. are all I didn't see one bad uh thing in the entire lot. Wonderful. Jack just thank seemed you, to thank work. you to all of you who sent that in. That's great. Absolutely. You guys were fantastic. And for everybody who inquired, 
Thank you. Jack got his in really, really quick, and it seemed to work very, very well with the vibe of the show that we're going for. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing personal. You guys were all awesome. If we have another project or if like in the future, one of us creates another podcast, we will absolutely hit you guys up. I still have your information. All that kind of stuff. Mug. <laughs> you guys want to do mugs? Yeah, if somebody wants to do this, somebody wants to do I the do mug. Things. I do. Yeah, things. that's wonderful. So, uh, I, we actually have a new design that's going to, because people were asking about mugs. So we actually got a new design from Edgar that I think is really cool. I'll share with you guys. Right on. And, uh, and I'm going to put that on mugs. But if somebody wants to do the I'm Orthodox, I do ancient, I do ancient things, things mug, yeah. I will buy one. Oh, I will yeah. buy one Absolutely. of that one. <laughs> I'll wear my own band shirt. I don't care. <laughs> um, And I think I think that's some of the housekeeping, housekeeping I wanted to get rid of. I'd like to start shouting out Jack every episode because he's obviously playing a huge part in it. Um, uh, so... Other than that, we had the merch store at royalpath.store. Yep, Boom. got it in one. Um, and then we have our playlist, uh, which is now getting very, very interesting. There's a lot. It's kind of all over the place. And we got Kenny Rogers. <laughs> Singing <and> Christmas songs. <laughs> Kenny Rogers and Death Grips on the same, like, <laughs> um, followed by Kate Bush. And Bette Midler. <laughs> and followed by Bette Midler. Um. And so, uh, yeah, there's lots. Uh, followed by Bad Brains, followed by Chrome Eggs. It's, it's <laughs> doesn't make so, any sense. Yeah. Um. So we have the and I think that's just on Spotify. It's Royal uh, uh podcast playlist, something like that. It's, it's in the description. Um. And then, uh, please keep sending in your emails to Andrew at Royal Path Network. Um, I'm getting them. I promise. I promise. I'm getting them. I have them. I've been going through them, trying to make sure that we answer questions as best as we can. If it's been a couple months and you still haven't heard anything, please email me again. Like sometimes I just need a little, a little nudge. It's a one man operation. The emails is a one man operation. So I'm just letting you know. And this one man is also kind of busy as well. Not an excuse, but a reason. Um, other than that, I think that's it. And thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you.